Okay, um, my name is Peter Iyo Ona. I'm from Cross River State. Uh, Yala, Oguja to be precise. <laughs> I do gospel music. I do have mentors, a handful of them. Um, Prosper Ochimana is one of those mentors of mine. Um, Owe Abutu recently connected to him and um, we've been talking. Um, Dunsin Oyekan, also a mentor. Uh, for now, I think these are the three persons I, I, I'm a mentee to. I, I follow them closely. My own definition of a gospel song is not in the song. It's in who is singing the song. Now, because we, we have secular singers who sing songs that somehow we've tagged as gospel songs. But it's, it's, like, it's like a good water coming from a bad tap. Do you understand? So uh, for me, I see, I see a good gospel, I see gospel song from the perspective of the person singing that song. Now, if we have a refined person singing a song, we can call that a gospel song. Now, having Jesus in a song or not is not a definition of a gospel song. You can have Jesus in a song and still not a gospel song. Uh, I would, okay, I would make mention of this song. I think recently I was discussing with somebody and um, we, know, we all know this song, um, R. Kelly. I, um, Storm is over. Yes, Storm is over. Now, would we want to say that's a gospel song or a secular song? Would we want to say, as I say, from my own perspective, it's this person, the person singing the song. Now, I'm going to tell us a few things. Um, from my own perspective, some of these persons, they have, um, they take this thing as uh, a profession. Now, remember, somebody can go to school to read music as a profession. And the person comes out and decides to, to do this thing, probably in the gospel world. And you say you would not, I don't want to use the word pay now, you will not appreciate the person. It's, it's, it's really somehow because it takes a lot of work to do a song. I think recently you can't do a song for less than 50,000 there. In fact, my producer now collects 100 and above. So where do you want him to get that money from? Now, I know somebody will say, let him go and work. Yes, I know you say, let him go and work, then come back. Now, if we all work, how do we become better in this thing we do? Yes, there are some persons who will work and still do this thing, but there are some persons, okay, even in the, in the, in the ministry world, some say full-time and some say part-time. Some still work and some don't work. So how those who don't work, how will they take care of themselves? Now you have the instrumentalist with you. You have the keyboardist, your drummer, whatever, and your backup. Now at the end of the day, this person is left one or two things to be with you for that meeting. And at the end of the day, you allow them to go without nothing and they go back to probably their families how do they take care of their families now where i see the wrong is when you start negotiating that's where i see that's where i have issues where you now tell okay if it is not this amount i am not coming if it is not this i'm not coming i think that becomes a business <laughs> It's not fun. A lot of them would want to do anything. In fact, it got to a point I stopped collecting numbers. And, uh, you know, as a single person, then you, they would want to use food, food, food to get to you. Let me come and cook for you. Let me come and cook for you. And, you know, as a young man, you, you need those things and uh, <laughs> you will want to take those risks and all of that. So it's crazy. It's crazy. But one of the things that had helped me thus far is I, I try to... I try to be friendly in that friendly nature. I also try to be strict. In fact, if you know some of them, they will tell you that Peter is mean. They always say I'm mean. Like, I was so intentional about that part of me because if you sometimes, if you don't get um, forceful and mean at them, you might just end up not getting what you don't want. And in the gospel world, some of these things can and dent your image in the future and all of that. So one just needs to be very careful. It's not funny, but though God has helped us. Now I'm going to say my own perspective about chance. Uh, 
I don't see it as an issue. But the problem here is we are beginning to abuse it. Now, in the sense, yes, we know there are realms you can get to where you would want to repeat words, repeat lines, and probably be lost of words. Now, but that's a personal thing. Now, where I see it as an abuse is where a person who has not, who doesn't have that real kind of relationship with God or that kind of fellowship would want to imitate another. Now, I'll tell you this. I think I was in the studio some years back and a, a gospel artist, per se, was recording a song and he spoke in tongue in that song. And after listening to the take, he told the producer to cut it in his words. Baba, I don't get that line. I don't get the tongue where. Cut, let me retake it. And I was like, did he cram the tongue? Did he rehearse the tongue? Did he hear it from somewhere? Now, there's no personal experience. He's using somebody else's experience and it's now becoming like, uh, you know, we used to watch movies, Nigerian movies, where we see our native doctors do some certain things. So it is now tilting towards that line that uh, if it is not chanting, God doesn't work. Or uh, some of them will want to use it in their head to charge the atmosphere and start acting it. And you see it all that this thing is not real. It is not just real. It is not just real. So we are abusing it. For me, it is not an issue, but it's the abuse of it. <laughs> Earlier, I told you about my three mentors. I would like to work with three of them. Number one is Dusi Onyeka. I would like to work with him, one, because of his older oh, man. Is, he knows music, apart from his spiritual life. Like, he knows real music he knows real music so i would like to work with him i like to work with prosper also and i also like to work with Owe abutu these are my three mentors and these are the three persons i would like to work with all right now let me tilt a little um personally i don't have an issue with a believer this is going to be crazy right now. I don't have an issue with a believer doing secular songs. Yes. 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 Romantic songs. For me, they are extreme to everything. Now, even in the secular world or in the entertainment world, you can still keep morals there. No, but they are extreme to it where you don't keep morals. Now, we will remember when, I remember when Lokidube came to Nigeria, he was interviewed. I watched that interview and he said something very striking. He said he doesn't drink and he doesn't smoke. Now, I bet you if you see that man on stage, you will want to bet with your life that he smokes and he drinks. Now, I brought this because they are extreme to the entertainment world. Now, but if you can keep away from those extremes, I don't see it an issue as a Christian or a believer doing romantic songs. Uh, if we go to the secular world, there's what we call mentorship. Now, they do more of that where you see a top secular singer who has risen to a particular level would want to pick one or two, three persons and help them rise. But I will tell you the truth, in the gospel world, we don't have that. We are so, so independent and it is not helping us at all. Now, we have people who have rise to certain levels and influence, who have influence also. But they are just on their own. And you would want to even get access to them, to even uh, see how they can help push. 
uh, but they will even give you that audience. So I think one of the major challenges we have in the gospel world uh, is, is this, um, everybody having this independent thing. Nobody wants to assist the other. We have one or two persons who are actually really trying. Now, but on the other hand, uh, I would like to say, I don't know, from experience though, uh, from what I've seen, I think some of them want to tell you that uh, they don't do it because the few ones they've done have betrayed them. You understand? Yes, it happens. But uh, even at that, it should not still be a yastic for not helping others to rise. I think recently I, I saw a, a tweet or a post by Noel Adejo. He said before his, um, what was that his song now? Before the song that gave him fame, he had recorded 33 songs before that song. So uh, who would have thought after the 33 songs he would still be relevant as he is now. So keep doing your thing. If you have that passion, that conviction in your heart, keep doing it. One day, God will just smile at you. Thank you very much. I still remain Peter Iyowo Ona. This is Talent and More, Black Giant TV. Please go to YouTube, subscribe to our channels, our Twitter handles, our Facebook, we have a lot for you, and as you keep watching, you keep experiencing more from Black Giant TV. Thank you, and God bless you.